which software system do you want to build? You can describe the required functionality in use cases or user stories. For example, as an end user, I want to visualize up to two days of data so that global relations can be identified. You can even describe the required quality of your software system in the same user stories if you add in T seconds. But how do you design a system that fulfills these requirements? The Palladio approach is designed to enable early stage performance predictions for software architectures. The Palladio component model, or PCM, is a domain specific modeling language. It is aligned with a component based software development process. Palladio targets a performance prediction for component based software architectures and is tailored to business information systems. In the component based software development process, First, component developers design and implement components and put descriptions of those components in a component repository. The model describes component interfaces, the behavior of the components, and the resources that are needed during the execution of different calls to the component. Then, a software architect collects the components they need and composes them to a system. The deployment of the components, the composed system and the resources the system is deployed on is described by a system deployer. Finally, a domain expert describes the usage of the system, when is which service called and with which parameters. Based on this architecture model, Palladio can perform different simulations and analysis for different purposes. For example, the model can be used to predict the execution time of a specific service call as a distribution function under the specified usage scenario. We will now demonstrate the usage of Palladio on an example system that represents a media store for uploading, storing and downloading different kinds of media files. We have already modeled the system in different views with which we describe the complete media store system. The first of these views is the repository view in which we find the interfaces and components that we need in our system. For example, we have a file storage component which we can use to store the media files. We have a media access component which gives us access to this file storage and the media management component that gives us access to the media store system by an iMedia management interface that can be implemented by UI and from which we can upload and download files. We have several interfaces which are required and provided by the different components and by which the components can be connected. And we've also modeled two alternatives for a cache which we will discuss later. All the components have service effect specifications for the operations they provide, which define the resource demands of the operations and which are used for performance simulation and prediction. In the second step, we have defined the system in which we define how these components are connected in a real deployment scenario. In this simple case, we only have these four components. The file storage for storing the media files, a packaging component for packaging them, the media access component and finally the media management component. And the media management component is connected with an interface of the complete system, in our case a web UI, with which we can access the media store system. And we do not use one of the model caches in this scenario. In the resource environment view we have defined the different resource containers that we use to deploy our system on. In our simple case, we only have two resource containers, which are an application server and a database server, both with one CPU and one HDD. And they are connected by an Ethernet network device, which has a defined latency and throughput. We also have to define how the components of a specific system are deployed on the resources of our resource environment in the allocation view. In this case, we deploy the file storage on the database server and the other components on the application server. So operations on the file storage have to be performed over the network connection. For the simulation of our system, we have also described the behavior of users that interact with the system in a usage model. This usage model specifies a single usage scenario, which defines that 80% of the users perform a download operation and 20% perform an upload operation. And we've also specified the number of files and the size of the files which the users download or upload by distribution functions. Additionally, we have defined a realistic number of user requests per time. Now that we have modeled the different views in our system, we can start a Palladio simulation run. 
Therefore, we have to configure some properties, especially the system that we want to use for the simulation and the usage model, which describes how the system is used within the simulation. We have already defined such a configuration for our cashless system that we've just seen and will now start the simulation. Palladio performs a configurable number of measurements, in this case it's 10,000, of different properties during the simulated usage of the system. And when it is finished, we can see the results in our experiments view. For example, the usage of CPU, HDD and the network usage. Also, the response times of the different calls are measured, especially the entry-level system calls, which describe the download and the upload function of our web UI. And we will now take a look at the response times of the system download function, which we can display in different visualizations. We select the cumulative distribution function, which shows us the probabilities to have a response time less than a specific value. For example, we can see that 90% of the download operations took less than 3.8 seconds in our simulation. If we assume that our media store contains popular files, for example currently popular songs, often the same file may be downloaded by different users several times within a short time period. And if we now take a look on the allocation of our components, we see that the access logic is deployed on a different server than the storage. This means that on each download of the same file, we have to send this file across the network connection between these two servers. To reduce the overhead by recurring network transfer, the idea is to introduce a cache on the application server that caches these popular files so that they don't have to be transferred across the network connection every time they are accessed. We have designed two different alternatives for the caching. We are now looking at the usage scenario where a user wants to download multiple files from the system. In the first alternative, which is pictured on the left, the system checks for each file whether it is in the cache and if not, the file is downloaded from the database. Then the next file is processed. In the second alternative, pictured on the right, the same check is done for each file, but if the file is not in the cache, it is only marked for download. After all files have been checked, all marked files are downloaded from the database to the cache component all at once. If we take a look on the initial media storage system without a cache, we can see that the media access component delivers files from the database to the media management component. So the cache has to be inserted between these two components, which exchange the downloaded data via the iDownload interface, which is also provided and required by the cache. If we now take a look at one of the systems with a cache, we can see that the cache has been inserted between those components. We also have to specify on which resource the cache is allocated. In our original system, we had the file storage deployed on the database server and the three components with the application logic on the application server. And to fulfill the purpose of the cache, we have to allocate it to the application server to cache often access data there. Now that we've also modeled the two system alternatives with different caches, we can start a Palladio simulation run for them by specifying the appropriate configurations with the alternative systems, which we've already prepared for this demonstration. So we now start the simulation runs. First, the simulation of the system with a cache that retrieves each file individually from the database while checking if it's already cached. And second, the simulation of the system for the cache that enqueues the files that are not cached and collectively retrieves them from the database after processing all the files. And when the simulation finished, we can again go to our experiments view and open our original diagram for the cacheless system version. And we just drag and drop the results from our new experiment runs into this view to easily compare them. We now see the version with the first cache, which directly downloads the files if they are not cached. And we can see that the response time distribution is not very different compared to that one of the system without a cache. We see that the probability for one request to have a response time less than a specific value is slightly less than in the cacheless system in half of the cases and slightly higher in the other half. We also drag the results of the system with the second cache into our diagram. And here the probability for one request to have a response time less than a specific value is always higher for the system with the cache than for the other two systems. 
And this is also what we expected because there is only one network connection independent from the number of requested files instead of establishing a connection for each file that has to be downloaded from the database as it is the case with the first cache and especially for the cacheless system and therefore the network latency applies only once per request. So with these simulation results we can select the system with the second cache alternative for the implementation and productive usage of our system because it promises the best performance at least in the evaluated usage scenario. We have now seen one use case where we wanted to assess different alternatives for the design of a system. But systems also change over time. For example, the sizing or connection of hardware can change, the usage of a system can change when users interact differently with the system, or the assembly context can change when different components are used to provide equivalent or similar functionality. Those are also cases where we want to assess the change in quality of the system and can use Palladio to do that. Besides assessing design decisions, Palladio also supports other use cases. For example, planning the sizing of a system, when we want to scale a system, when we want to use the resources we have in an optimal way, or want to optimize the configuration of the system. Furthermore, we can also plan the extension of legacy software using Palladio by building models of the quality relevant parts of legacy systems and combining them with newly designed components. Thank you for watching our screencast. If you want to find out more about the Palladio simulator, visit our website or feel free to contact us directly. A more comprehensive and in-depth look at Palladio and the Palladio approach is given in the book Modeling and Simulating Software Architectures, The Palladio Approach, which appeared in MIT Press in 2016.